In this video, I'm going to talk about what kind of plugins and other settings I recommend for Vim. I've been getting a lot of questions about just different things that I do in Vim in videos that people will see and won't know exactly what I'm doing. So I want to do a video just showcasing the kind of stuff I have in my VimRC just to make things clear and answer some questions and hopefully give you some ideas for the kind of stuff that you can do in your own VimRC. Now I'll go ahead and say well, we might as well start with plugins because that's the question I get the most or yeah the question I get the most. Now for plugin management I'll go ahead and say I use plugged um, I find that it's probably the simplest thing out there. Compare, I've used Pathogen, I've used some of these other things, but Plugged is probably the easiest thing. You really just have to put this little sequence in your VimRC, and you can install plugins by saying plug install, or update them by saying plug update or something like that. I usually don't actually update them that much, but you know. All you need is uh, this in your VimRC and it shouldn't throw any errors or anything similar. I, f I find it very easy to use. Now, the plugin that I get the most questions about is Goyo. In fact, the last video I did, I think I was using this plugin briefly and, you know, six, seven, eight people just commented in a row asking what it was. So Goyo, let me go ahead and turn it on. Goyo, what it does is it centers your text in Vim, you can see that you have a more readable format here. Of course, for a VimRC file, it's not going to make much of a difference. It's not supposed to be read. But if you're making a, if you're writing long paragraphs or something like that, and you want something that isn't filling up the screen, it's just sort of right in front of you and very readable. I definitely recommend Goyo. I have it set to leader F. My leader key is space, so it's just space F. We'll toggle it off and on. I definitely recommend this just because it, even when I was barely using plugins, this is one that I can pretty consistently liked using just because it just makes it a little more easy to actually write text. It's not like I use it when I'm writing code or anything, but uh, you might you might like it. Another plugin I have, I'll just run through these really briefly. Uh, I3 Vim syntax by default, Vim does not have the the syntax file for I3 config files, but this just adds that. Uh, Vimagit, if you might know, I think it's Magit in uh, Emacs, is a plugin for dealing with Git. And I actually have it open here in Vim, the Vim Magit. And it looks something like this where you have uh, unstaged changes that you can stage by pressing capital S and they move to the staged area. You can press capital C, capital C to send in a commit, commit message. So I'll say, you know, fish fix and then save to actually commit that stuff like that uh, this I think is still in development it's not as full featured as the Emacs equivalent that it's sort of uh, an allusion to I, I don't think you can push right now I think they're about to add the ability to push from in the buffer but of course you could send in a, a shell command to do that from Vim just as easily it's just not part of this plugin yet but I use this, I use this pretty much all the time when I'm using git. I used to use just use git on the command line, but I, I really like this stuff now. And other stuff, um, I have this thing Vimling, it's my own plugin. This is for typing like uh, accented characters or something like that. So I can turn in, turn on dead key mode. And if I type in quotation mark E or double quote, or yeah, quotation mark uh, or double mark quotation marks, um, it will put in, I guess, uh, diacritics on my characters, stuff like that. So this is a plugin that I use a lot. It also has an IPA mode if I want to write IPA characters or something like that, but uh, that that's another issue. Uh, I actually did a video on this if you want to check it out. Uh, just search up, I don't know, special characters in Vim and it'll show up. So anyway, that's that's that. I also have VimWiki, that's just to get markdown syntax and markdown, uh, just minor markdown things. Uh, I don't actually use the Vim wiki as its main. Uh, you, you can have this kind of org mode like environment. I, I don't really like that so much. I don't really use it. But And the other one, I don't actually use this last one, but multiple cursors. You might be interested in it. I don't really use that much. But um, So some basic settings. One of the settings I get the most questions about is simply setting numbers. That is, people will see my numbers on the side of my Vim and get confused by them. It's the simplest thing in the world. Just set number and then relative number. And as you can see, the line that I'm on will have the what a, whatever number it is. And then it'll have 
numbers displayed arraying from that point. And that is the reason I do this is if I wanna to move to this line, I know that it's 10 up, so I can just say 10K and move up there. So that's very convenient in Vim. Other settings, uh, I don't know why this isn't default, but wild mode, this is for having auto completion. Let's say I wanna you know, open a split and I wanna have my bash file. I can tab complete whatever file I want. If you don't have, if you have wild mode on, you can, you know, it, it's basically an autocomplete. I don't know why this isn't default because I think it's, I don't know, it just seems like something you would have. And I also just hate uh, automatic commenting, so I turn that off. As I said, Goyo is ma mapped to F, or leader F. I also have spell check on leader O, O4 orthography or whatever. I did a video on Vim spell checking. If you want to check that out, I'll go through. I go through, you know, all how to add words to your personal dictionary and check for them and, you know, stuff like that. So check that out if you don't know about it. But leader O turns off and on spell check. And one of the other weird default settings in Vim is if I just open by default, if you don't change this, if you open a split, it will open above. Your, your currently open file or if you open a vertical split it'll open to the left and I find that really counterintuitive so I tell it to if I want to open a split you know a vertical split we'll say new file it opens on the right by default or if I want to just open a normal split uh, I guess a horizontal split it'll open below I find it really weird that the default is not like that uh, also on splits by default, to move from split to split, you have to press Control W and then one of the Vim keys, you know, HJKL. I find that's too much, so I just map them to Control uh, plus HJKL, just a little easier. Other things, so in terms of in terms of external scripts, there are a couple things that I evoke from Vim pretty much all the time. You can see some of them here. First off is shell shell check. This is a nice little script. If you don't know what this is, it will analyze any kind of shell script and it will tell you if there are any errors but more importantly like what kind of formatting irregularities you might have it'll check to see if you're writing a POSIX compliant shell script it will make sure that you don't have bashisms just to show you what that looks like when I call it from Vim if I press leader and S this pops up it gives me recommendations actually it looks like I have a lot of stuff it recommends me to change in my Vim or my bash RC but um, that's the kind of stuff that it does. So I find that very useful when I'm writing stuff. And of course you can come, you don't need Vim for this, but I like calling it within Vim. So I have it mapped to leader S. I also have, uh, sometimes I want, it, when I'm writing some kind of academic paper, I like to pull up my bibliographies nice and fast. So I have leader B to bring up my bibliography. Well, that's my LaTeX bibliography. My ref bibliography, or for graph, is control, or space R. And you'll notice two things that I do in videos all the time is when I'm compiling a document, be that LaTeX or Graph or Markdown, R Markdown, um, you'll see me often, well actually I think I pulled up, yeah. So I'm gonna pull up an example Graph document and I have a compile script that I have mar mapped to uh, space C. So that'll compile, it's a general handler, I'll show it to you in a second. That'll compile a document and control P will bring up its corresponding PDF. Um, now this, of course, it's a script run from Vim, but you know this is very much independent. For example, I can close the the Vim buffer, and there's no problem. Um, now to show you these scripts, let me go ahead and uh, what is it? So compiler. These, of course, are all on my GitHub's, uh, my GitHub's, my GitHub. Um, really, all it is is a script that just checks okay what kind of file type is it and runs a particular command to compile it depending on what it is same thing for the the open the output uh, binding it just checks whatever file it is and opens a corresponding pdf or something like that um, and it's different for different file types so that's it that's that's one thing that i use pretty frequently you'll see me using that in a lot of my videos and um, I have a little script that cleans up text or like tech file, LaTeX build files when I leave them, other stuff like that. One annoying thing about, so, well, on some edge cases in Vim, sometimes it doesn't auto detect certain types of files. So I just have it set, you know, be sure to read these as markdown, be sure to read these um, as graph. And I also have my CalCurse notes set for markdown and stuff like that. Uh, I'm going to skip a little ahead here. Oh, one other thing that people, another common question people ask about is how do you copy and paste in Vim? 
here are what I have to copy and paste in Vim. Check. I had I did a video on copying and pasting. I mean, not not you know general Y and D and P and stuff like that, but copying from Vim to like your browser or vice versa. I did a video on that. Check that out if you haven't seen it already. And the only other thing that I think might be uh, worth looking at is I have I I have a command right here that will automatically delete all trailing white space when I save something. So if this is actually every once in a while, uh, this annoys me. Someone will like push some commit to one of my repositories that has a bunch of trailing white space, and it'll mess something up because they don't check it. But um, this this has happened to me multiple times. But uh, this is one little thing that I do to at least make sure that I don't do it. So whenever I save, you'll notice I made some white space here. But when I save the document, that white space actually gets deleted. Now, there are only a couple times when you need white space at the very end for certain types of documents, but um, those are really rare. And uh, other than that, I'll just note that there are a couple things. Uh, for example, when I edit my X resources file, I actually have it. So whenever I edit that file, it'll automatically update my XRDB, my X database, uh, just reading that file automatically. That's just because, and I think I have that, oh yeah, with this thing as well. So I have some bookmark files to keep uh, where I generate bash aliases from. And whenever I up update those, I have it explicitly update the, the shortcuts for that. So just bear in mind that you can do this when you, whenever you finish editing a file, you can say buff, buff write post and have some command run for that file or something like that. So that's most of my VimRC. The rest of it is really just snippets. I've talked about these before when, you know, if I'm in a LaTeX file, notice these are all my LaTeX snippets. If I type in this particular sequence, it will generate, you know, if I want to make some bold text. I just type in BF and it will just automatically input the syntax for that bold font. Um, that's very convenient when just sort of uh, doing things automatically in Vim. Um, I, there are, of course, many plugins that can do this for you by loading someone else's configurations, but I, I find that it's just easier to do it myself. This might seem like a lot, but it's really just like one afternoon, I was like, eh, I'm gonna make some shortcuts for LaTeX and just do that. It's as easy as just typing it out once, frankly. Same thing with HTML. Additionally, things like inputting uh, special characters. I have, if, I, if I'm editing an HTML file, actually I'll just do that. If I input some kind of special character like, uh, you know, E with an accent on it or something like that, let me go ahead and do that. It will automatically, I should probably use my dead key thing. It'll automatically replace it with uh, the HTML escape sequence for that. So I find that really convenient. I just think it, it, you know, just a little optimization. Now again, there are plugins for all this stuff, but I just sort of like doing it myself. But that's pretty much all I have in my VimRC. Again, if you have any specific questions about the plugins, I'm sure you can look them up. Again, I've done videos on spell checking in Vim or, you know, all, the, all these other kind of things. If you have any questions, be sure to check. But if I don't have videos on them, feel free to ask. Um, but anyway, that's about it. So hopefully they, get, they gave you some ideas and I will see you guys next time.